Hey, Nopes, mate, can you just give us a, a, an update on, on Ben Cunnington and um, just how much the news yesterday sort of rocked the club? Uh, yeah, look, I'll, I'll make one comment and then I won't be making any more. Um, we're sending our best wishes to Ben and Belinda and their extended families. Um, you know, they've got certainly our love and support and our best wishes. Um, yeah, all, all those unfortunate circumstances, mate, when they, they land, um, you know, they're always difficult to deal with. Um, you know, we briefed the players uh, as early as we could yesterday um, once we'd worked through all the issues with Ben. Um, briefed the players again this morning and, um, yeah, we, we're sort of getting ready for training. So, yeah, as I said, mate, we, we wish him all the best. We hope for a speedy recovery. Um, the other thing I'd like to do is just like to thank the media on behalf of the club for the respect that they've shown. Um, you know, we really appreciate the, the care that the media has shown towards Ben and his family and, and us as a footy club. Not, not one on Ben, but just on the playing group in general, how they've, they've handled the news, Dave? Yeah, there, there's always a, a range of emotions. Um, you know, I think with this, these types of things, mate, the, you know, people have sometimes had their own, you know, previous experiences, you know, fortunate or unfortunate with these things. So we just need to be, you know, diligent in making sure that, you know, internally our guys feel supported as well, you know, with any previous experiences that these things tend to, to bring up. So we'll work really hard in the background to make sure we've got those, those mechanisms in place. Um, as I said, we, we had a, a chat about a few things this morning, um, gave our staff and, and players a brief, and now we're, um, you know, we're, we're sort of not moving on without, you know, obviously the, the sensitivity of it. But, um, yeah, we, we're now getting ready for training and heading to Tassie and playing the Cats. Is it going to be hard to keep the guys focused this week, David? How do you go about sort of keeping them on track and, and focusing on the on the game? Yeah, well, well, I think if you address it, Shane, you know, that that's the main thing. I, I think so the players, you know, feel like it's OK to discuss things if they need to, um, you know, to ask questions. So I think that's really important that both from staff and players' perspective that, um, you know, that they have um, a sense of, it's OK to move on with things and it's OK to discuss things if you need to. So we just need to be aware of that. But we certainly feel like we'll get through today, um, get through our captain's run tomorrow. And by the time we end up down in Tassie on Saturday, I'm sure we'll be ready to go. Um, losing Cunnington for this week, obviously, and, and Thomas as well. Um, yep. Who does that sort of open up opportunities for? Who, who takes those roles this week? Yeah, well, look, I think around, uh, so Marnie becomes available if Robbie, you know, gets through from that side of things. Um, you know, Jed came back in last week, um, so he probably gets a bit more midfield time. You know, Will Phillips has been in and around sort of through that forward area. He may get more midfield time. We've got a few guys, you know, that are in pretty good form from um, the scratch match that we had, the combined match that we had on the weekend. So... Yeah, look, with all of these circumstances, mate, it, it means that when you lose um, someone like that, then you need a range of other guys to step up into that breach. Um, one, it creates opportunity, and two, it quite often helps you spread the load. So um, whilst you become or can be a bit, you know, reliant at some times, um, you know, with those those big stars, the other thing that it brings, it brings a little bit of versatility and opportunity. So... That's how we'll look at it this week, and um, yeah, it, it gives some more time to certain um, to certain some number of our younger players in the, in those areas of the ground. How's yeah, Thomas uh, tracking? Sorry, mate. How's Thomas tracking at the moment? Yeah, look, I think he had another check in yesterday, so so far so good. So I think he's moving through that that band. Um, you know, they go through a range of different tests that moves them from. Um, you know, a traffic light system. So I think he's progressing um, in line with what, you know, we would hope um, that that may make him available for, for next weekend's game. But, you know, again, there's a no-risk policy, obviously, with those things. And um, hopefully if he can, if he can get through um, in the right ranges and get moving in the next few days, then next week starts to look like it, it might be possible. Do you get... Uh, Sorry, mate. Sorry, do you get Robbie Tarrant back this week, Nose? Yeah, well, he'll be out training, Riley. There's, he'll be out having a run around today. So, yeah, if he gets through training, mate, he'll, um, he'll certainly be up for selection again.
Hey, Dave, uh, where's young Tommy Powell at? We haven't seen him for a number of weeks. Yeah, we, we'll probably be know by the end of the week, I reckon, Corey, whether or not we're able to get him back and going or not. Um, we've sort of tried to move him forward a little bit. Um, there's been a little bit of soreness, and with a younger guy and the load that he had, um, we'll probably make a determination by the end of this week as to whether or not we'll, we'll push on or whether we'll just say, like, that's enough. So... Um, you know what those young guys like, like they want to push through and come back and get going. But um, there's also a, you know, an understanding that you don't want any long-term issues to delay his pre-season. So we'll, we'll make an assessment on him by the end of the week. Are you, are you leaning towards wrapping him in cotton wool now? Probably. I wouldn't tell him that just yet, but he'll probably know that now. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, look, I think he's shown um, some great skills, some composure in that midfield. You know, he's another exciting young midfielder coming through. So, yeah, I'm probably leaning on, on more that way. Um, and, look, we'll, we'll have those discussions with the medicos in the next couple of days. But, yeah, I think that's probably where my headspace is at the moment. David, there's been a lot of talk this year about how rebuilding sides tend to tail off towards the end of the season a lot of the time. Mm. It's been quite the opposite. You've sort of been building pretty well over the last month and after the buy. What do you put that down to within this group? Uh, well, I think we've we've maintained our internal process, I think, Riley, in, in continuing to sort of um, chase incremental improvements and, and go hard after those. I think we've, we've celebrated those as we've seen them um, and then they've continued to sort of escalate over the last sort of five or six weeks particularly. Um, I think post the buy, we, we did a lot of education in regards to our, our game plan and how we wanted guys to play. Uh, lots of dis discussion and dialogue with, with players in regards to what it you know it's going to look like. And to the players' credit, they've um, they've been full of energy and you know and, and full of um, a willingness and a want to continue to improve. So yeah, so we, look, we're really we're bullish about continuing to improve in the in the next sort of three or four weeks. So that's that's exciting. I think it's exciting for our fans if we can maintain, you know, that direction of, of what that looks like. Um, so yeah, so we'd like to finish the next three or four weeks with some with some real strong performances with a couple of, you know, tough teams coming up. Are there many bigger challenges than Geelong at the moment? Uh, probably is if we played them down there. But um, but yeah, taking them down to Tassie, um, which coincidentally enough was our normal scheduled game. And we've been down there six times quite safely and the Tassie government have been outstanding in, in their assistance. Um, so no, they're, they're in terrific form. There are, you know, I think I might have mentioned a few weeks ago with a, with a couple of other teams, you know, when we were playing the Bulldogs, they're a, they're a hardened team, the Cats. You know, they play a great brand of footy. They've played... Um, you know, successful finals for a long period of time. Um, you know, they're they're a hard nut to crack. Uh, they really are. So, yeah. So we'll certainly need to be to bring our best, Shane. Um, you know, in the way that we want to play. They're um, you know they're not going to let the game go on to our terms. You know, I wouldn't think very easily. So we put up a, not a bad fight last time when we played them down there. Um, you know, we think we've advanced our game um, in a few areas well. Um, you know, since that time. But, yeah, they're, they're going to be a tough nut to crack, no doubt. How's uh, Cam's last shoulder? Uh, Noves didn't look too good on the weekend. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how he pulls up um, today on on that as well, Corey. We're, we're not 100% sure whether he'll, he'll get through. So, again, with a month to go, um, you know, if it means that he's got to have a spell for a week, well, then we'll have that discussion. But, yeah, at this stage... He's probably 50-50, I would have thought. Just another selection one, David. Is Will Phillips all right after that knock last week? Yeah, they, they couldn't stop the the blood flow, which is why we subbed him out. They were concerned of... And they didn't want to wrap his nose with the fracture um, that he had. But, yeah, he's, he's lucky, Riley. He didn't end up with two black eyes. So he was pretty happy that um, that didn't occur. But, yeah, it's a bit flat and it's a little bit... Um, a little bit uglier than what it was a couple of uh, a few days ago, but we would expect that he'll be he'll be fine to play.